Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to explore some uh, Adobe XD plugins and uh, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite plugins for 2021. So without further ado, let's jump on my computer. So let's get started and let's uh, talk about my favorite uh, Adobe XD plugins. So in order to access the plugins, uh, you simply have to go on the very bottom uh, left uh, and uh, just click on the plugins icon. And as you can see, you're going to see all of the plugins right here. If you want to add a plugin, just click on the plus button and uh, just go and browse and you can simply search for these plugins. But uh, without further ado, let's get started with the very first one, which uh, is uh, Arranger. So right now I just have uh, a artboard right here. And uh, basically what Arranger enables you to do is to create uh, different arrangements for a group of objects. So in this case, I just have this uh, white rectangle, which uh, I'm going to duplicate uh, just a few times uh, in a random order. And I'm also going to make uh, the rectangles just a little bit smaller. And I'm going to click on the start arranger. Now, the very first uh, element which uh, you're going to see is the circle. So if uh, we click on the circle and uh, we just set this, uh, uh, this size, uh, as we have now and we click on arrange you can see that uh, almost magically these uh, rectangles manage to come into a circle and uh, you can select also the, the width so for example if i want uh, more width uh, or more height uh, i can simply set it from uh, here i can also set the direction which in this case we want to really see the difference uh, unless we tweak some of the other areas such as the well let's go and uh, go on the start angle so this is this is enabling you to basically decide the start angle and also the end so you can decide not to go all the way to 360 degrees and uh, let's just make it to maybe something around uh, these lines and uh, if we change the direction now it's going to be more clear what's uh, happening so for the most part, it's just about uh, like whenever you need uh, this type of plugins, such as Arranger, it's just a matter of, of trying uh, a few things based on your specific needs. Uh, and uh, yeah, just, just, just try it out. The other um, great feature about Arranger is that it enables you to basically arrange these elements into grids. So as you can see here, I just uh, created a column of three and uh, I haven't set any gutter so let's do that uh, and also i set some height uh, uh, so that you can see the distance between uh, one of these rectangles and the other and uh, you can also go on the wave uh, and uh, basically this is going to enable you to arrange uh, um, the, the the entire uh, composition in basically waves uh. so yeah just something uh, cool for 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 some designs maybe you have like a lot of circle elements and you want to and you want to create sort of a wave uh, uh, design so definitely something which is pretty cool and uh, now let's move on to the very next plugin which is icons 4 so the great thing about icon 4 is that it enables you to basically find different icons of different icon libraries so for example i just went on search but you know by default it will show around something like that so again i search on search and basically i can see all these uh, magnifying glasses from all these different libraries and i can simply click on the icon and the icon is going to spawn directly in the artboard now we're not seeing it because uh, the icons spawn as black by default but if you turn the fill and the border to white, uh, you can see that now we have all sorts of different icons. And the great thing about uh, this uh, plugin is that uh, whenever we add a new icon, you can also see the label of what uh, icon library it's, uh, it is about. So in this case, it's icon material, icon map, icon iconic, feather icon. So really cool to keep track of everything and a very easy way to add the icons into Adobe XD. Now, another cool plugin, and uh, for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the appearance of the artboard to white 
is uh, the lower ipsum. So if we just go ahead here and uh, maybe start typing and let's uh, just make everything, uh, oops, let's select everything, let's make it black and let's also go ahead and uh, reduce the, the size. Um, I can go on lower ipsum as I have this selected, click fill with uh, layer text and uh, yep, that will do. And as you can see, we have this uh, um, model up here. So basically we have, uh, we can select the placeholder text. Uh, um, in this case, we're just going to go with the classic lorem ipsum. We can select the end with punctuation or ellipsis. We're gonna go with that. Um, there's also this check mark to include line breaks uh, or trim area height to fit inserted text. Uh, we'll just leave it as default. And uh, as you can see, we just uh, generated uh, some Lorem Ipsum text. And uh, the coolest thing is that if we make the font uh, um, just smaller, let me try this again, you can see that now it's going to cover more area. And uh, in this case, I have uh, a very high line height. So if I go ahead and l make it smaller, and I go again, quick Lorem Ipsum, I can I can easily see that uh, um, I can I can create some uh, uh, placeholder text in a very fast and efficient way. Now another cool plugin which uh, I want to discuss is uh, Pattern Maker, and uh, we're going to create uh, just a rectangle right here, and let's uh, click on Pattern Maker. And uh, as you can see, we have essentially two modes. The first one is seamless. Second one is grid. We click on the uh, seamless and we just set it to three columns by three rows. Click on make pattern. You can see that now we essentially have uh, all of these uh, um, elements uh, in this specific pattern. And uh, if we click on uh, grid, uh, we create uh, the pattern. Or actually, let's uh, undo this. Let's click on uh, make pattern again. Basically, you can see that now we created a grid. We can also adjust the padding. And, uh, again, if we click on make pattern again, it's basically going to create uh, a pattern of this pattern. So definitely something which, which can be really, really cool if you're into pattern design and uh, definitely something that can help you save tons and tons of time if used correctly. Now, another cool plugin is uh, Quick Mockup. And the uh, Quick Mockup, uh, pretty straightforward in the name. You can simply add uh, elements uh, to create uh, mockups uh, pretty quickly and efficiently. And uh, as I just uh, added this element, you can see that I have a few options. So I can make it, for example, secondary or even a ghost button. And uh, I can select the state. So active, hover, disabled, error. So that's that. You can also make it small or large. And of course, change the text inside of the button. So pretty cool plugin. Uh, pretty cool to create uh, mockups of uh, all sorts. And um, yeah, there's all sorts of different elements really from the labels to drop downs. Um, there's really quite a bit uh, of uh, elements going on. There's also the, the text, uh, toggle, tab, slider. All of these elements, uh, all of these UX elements, which uh, usually would need uh, in order to create uh, a, uh, a mockup quickly, uh, you can basically find them here. Maybe it's not uh, the most, uh, um, it's not the biggest library out there, but uh, definitely to have it as a plugin instead of uh, uh, manually open a UX or UI kit, uh, um, can definitely save, save some time and uh, really easy to use. Uh, I also love the, the fact that uh, you have uh, different states, so definitely a time saver. Now another plugin which uh, I really like and I use uh, pretty much all the time 
uh, it's uh, rename it. So if we go ahead uh, and we create uh, just a few rectangles right here, um, we go on the layer spawner. You can see that these uh, rectangles have like all sorts of different uh, layer names. And uh, if you select them all and we click uh, on the rename it or use the um, or use the shortcut, which is shift command plus W, you can see that uh, basically we have a few options to rename them. Um, the options which I use all the time is number sequence ascendance. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to rename the layers into numbers. So based on which one is first in the layers hierarchy uh, all the way to the bottom one. So if I click on rename and going to the, the, the layers panel, you can see that now I have the number, the layers renamed as numbers one, two, three. And uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty cool, pretty useful, and uh, yeah, definitely something which uh, I use quite a lot, especially in conjunction with uh, other features, such as uh, um, I can I can uh, rename uh, a specific uh, element uh, in a certain way, such as uh, rectangle. Then I can use uh, a dash. Uh, and I can use number sequence ascendance. Click on rename. As you can see, I have these. Uh, I have rectangle and, and the dash, but then I used the, the number sequence ascendance in order to create this uh, mixed formula. And uh, I I use this pretty much all of the time when I'm uh, cleaning up files. And uh, there's a bunch of other options. Um, I don't really use them. Um, as much or at all. Maybe the only one which uh, I would consider using is the alphabet sequence. Uh, if I click on rename, uh, you can see that it's basically A, B, and C based on uh, the first one all the way to the bottom one. But uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty pretty much uh, that. Um, another really cool uh, plugin is uh, UI faces. So if I click on UI faces, I can uh, essentially sort, uh, I can essentially uh, choose uh, a few options such as uh, where should the source be. If you have any websites that you, you would like to source in particular, you, know, you can just click on the checkbox in order to just source faces from this website, for example. And uh, you can also select the age bracket, the gender, the emotion, the hair color. There's also some advanced features which uh, I, I I rarely toggle on. And um, basically, you can click on apply, <clears throat> and uh, as you can see, as UI faces is working. Um, oh, okay, let's uh, try and uh, I'm just going to add a, a few more of these sources. I'm going to click on apply. And as you can see, some uh, random uh, um, images have been uh, sourced from the internet and uh, have been applied to the ovals. So if you're working on a very large uh, project, and maybe you need like a lot of faces, maybe for a table, maybe for some uh, uh, user setting screen, uh, definitely a very useful plugin which can save you tons of time. Now let's move on to the next one, which is uh, also the last one and uh, one of my favorites for illustrations. And this is the Android plugin. So if you click on Android, you can see that uh, basically this is going to enable you to have the entire Android library directly in uh, uh, a Adobe XD plugin format. So you can search for anything such as is going to search for something random like PC. As you can see, I have uh, all sorts of different uh, illustrations. And uh, as described on the very top left, these are attribution free illustrations for clients and personal design projects in any color you prefer. Uh, this uh, is a massive library, which I used uh, in the past. Uh, and a really, really cool library from Katerina Limpizzoni. 
and uh, I hope uh, I pronounced that right. Uh, if not, sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just just an amazing, amazing uh, illustration library. You can simply click on uh, one of the illustrations and uh, just use command plus V so that they basically paste. Uh, I can also right click and uh, click on paste. I'm going to basically paste it, duplicate. But uh, yeah, and then um, you can simply go ahead, uh, deep select uh, and uh, change uh, the illustrations since uh, these are SVG. So you can essentially adapt them based on your specific needs. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed this uh, plugins, uh, uh, WXD plugins video. And I'll see you in the next one.